you can clarify this if you've heard. Is Pop retiring? I don't follow basketball, so I don't know. Oh. Right now, it's looking like it was a, a rumor. Uh, okay. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid rags. So, Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the like button. Yeah. And today we got a uh, part two of Shah Rukh Khan's Beneath the Surface uh, video. Uh, we saw the uh, other one. Uh, I'm very glad. And there's actually four parts, believe it or not. Really? To this entire... So it's, oh, my stars. But they're all about 15 minutes, so it's about an hour-long interview. Okay. Well, I'm just, assuming, well, let's see. Is it still the walk-around, or are we going to... Okay, great. I do believe it's a walk-around. Great, great, great. Um, but I guess they just decided to cut them up into parts, um, as opposed to... Anyways, here we go. That's probably smart. A soundbite world we live in. I love that shirt. So these His? Y'all love it. Sort of, you know, forming images about you in on social media or talking to you. Why did you do this? Why? How much attention do you pay to that? I can't pay any attention. Not because I think uh, it's meaningless or I think that it's uh, uh, not worth a listen. Mm. But I mean, uh, a lot of, lot of stuff on the social media is just uh look at this like whole jam here <laughs> always remember when a camera is moving backwards and the actors are walking forward that means the camera guys are I mean, walking here backwards and, and then, then there's a guy behind and him. another one behind him to keep uh, him safe sometimes a very small thing is made out to be too big which are not even related to and for a moment or two but i guess now it's handled by i have enough fans it's right for them come on <laughs> Tell them it's not true. <laughs> so you sort of oh i bet he's got an office. army uh, i I mobilize love. I mobilize love. <laughs> you know, Each of them has an army. When, when you're at a stage where when you make a decision to do a film, it sort of changes the ecosystem of that film. Right? Of course. So it's so important what you commit to and what you don't commit to. So how much do you actually think through before you say yes or no? Or is it purely gut even now? Purely gut. Even now. Purely gut, yeah. And that's why like, I, I say yes to a film and then... My well wishers and friends, they just turn away. We don't have to do this yet. Why are you doing this? You are doing And genuinely, it's not a like I'm doing Anand's wife from now. You know, I'm a dwarf. And why would you be a dwarf? <laughs> I'd like to see you like this one. And it's going to be very difficult. Six, eight months of hard work. And with my knees. And VFX. And I've just gotten out of fan. Which took the Nikki out of me. It was really difficult to do. I just do it by God. I don't have any. Uh, Calculation. That is, when a film doesn't fare as well as it, I think, can, um, then I'm like, I've got to calculate But I can't do it here. I didn't do it in the well, beginning. I, I, I couldn't do it in the beginning. I can't do it now. You know, when I when I started off, I think I was the right guy at the right place, right time. Maybe. Things just fell into place. I don't take credit for all of it. I'm just hoping it'll continue like that. And, uh, if you can be lucky once, you can keep on being lucky. <laughs> Why am I negative? You got it right once. For like 25 years. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Talk about that uh, shock to Indian walking around. So you I see saw, um, <laughs> the graduation speech that you did at the Dhirubhai Ambani mm. International School and you talked about, I'm going to completely mess the pronunciation, that German word. Zoom, Zeitgeist? Uh, Zoom where? Oh, no. And you said it's being in a situation where you really think you'll never get out and you're like, damn, I have to get out. And and you said, ask me, I've just made Dilwale and then followed it up with fan. And you said to the kids that, you know, make a move with a little bit of embarrassment, it'll pass. Yeah. And I thought it was an amazingly sorted way of handling things that didn't go the way you wanted them. Did did it take a while to get to that place? One, let me be very honest, because I said this to the kids, so I won't lie to them ever. Uh, there is no other alternative that you can have. <laughs> you feel, if you're in a spot which is, you know, uh, you know which, is, which is in the devil and the deep sea, 
uh, and you know it goes wrong there will be a little bit of embarrassment uh, embarrassment is uh, extremely uh, a self inflicted issue the truth is really that not very many people are actually bothering about what's happening to them. not very many people. um so it is self inflicted but still it exists just because self inflicted does not mean you don't feel embarrassed or a little bit of embarrassment uh, it's a chess move is my and uh, yeah, with a little bit of embarrassment uh, just do the thing what came to your heart if it went wrong uh, just move on and yeah i mean i really believe that uh, uh, the only cure for failure at work is more work the only cure for success at work is more work <laughs> so there is nothing else that you can do but very work and that's the only cure i find i know uh, at this age so many people friends they all turn around and say Or what more do you want? So you don't need to be in this hurry. You don't need to be in hurry. I'm like, how do you know? You know? Yep. Not the start. Huh? Life itself. Yep. How do you know? How are you so confident that I should not hurry? Suppose, suppose I'm not in hurry and this ends. Will you make it happen? <laughs> so don't take a chance. Absolutely. In life, in You're not promised life, tomorrow. Don't take a chance. Yeah. Just do what needs to be done. And sometimes if it goes wrong, you gotta move on. I would tell all children, every failure. Build it up. Keep it next to you. Move on from it, but don't forget it. Just move on from it, but don't forget. It. Let it be something—a reminder of how you failed for those years. Uh, let it teach you. Let it make you remember. It. Oh, I don't like that feeling. And if you hate failure hard enough, then you won't fail. So I've seen you talk about things I've said 15 years ago. You still remember lines people have written about you? Don't you think somewhere that's just holding on to stuff that you don't need to? I mean, isn't um, that like negative? No, 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 no. No. No, I think I'm an extremely positive person. As a matter of fact, I think uh, I'm so positive and uh, polite that people may think of me or take it as a weakness. A lot of people think just because I keep quiet and I overlook things, even in my departments of work, uh, which I should be looking maybe more carefully at. My strength is the fact that I am so frail, and I know all of us. Yes. I don't stand in judgment for sure. Yes, like any human being, I get angry with people, I get disturbed, or have a thought that oh, this is not right. Uh, and yes, uh, when you wrote what you wrote, I held it against you because I thought that was unfair. But you know, fair and unfair after some time, from whose point of view? You're, you're a journalist, you're a writer. You did your job thinking that was the best line you could come up with. I said, but that's not it. I felt closer to her than this. She could have given me that much leeway. Whatever you know, and I don't hold it against you anymore. Uh, and that wasn't the failure. That wasn't the failure that I would hold this car. When you talk about the cars, and when I talk about the cars, are of your own doing. You're running a race, and you're not prepared enough for it, and you lose it. You got to hold it there and know that you know I need to prepare more. It's as much as that. I mean, there's nobody who understands what it takes sometimes to be really down and out and wave a thousand people with the same smile. And I don't want to act that way. You know, I can do that in a movie, a fake smile I can do, but I don't want to do that. People who love me, yeah. Um, and there are days when you're really happy, and there's nobody to seriously share it with because nobody understands how happy it is to get the expression right, which is actually for a brief moment in time on celluloid. There's mm. nobody to say, you know, I did that nod here. Yeah. Oh, God, you know that whole scene just now when we finished the song. The cameraman Mohan came, and the director came, and Anushka came. And... Nice, nice, and quickly they got it over with because I know they also don't have this to share it with anyone else. And if you are an actor and have been doing it for 25 years, sometimes it seems like really stupid and mundane to be saying, "I, you know, Arun, I got that, you know, yeah, how does your job? I mean, really, it's so exciting. You do well, right? yeah, like this. I don't know how to share that moment of happiness, and I don't know how to really sit down and explain. This is what I feel. About a film, in spite and despite of what people write about it, or think about it, or thought about it, or analyzed about it, this is what I felt when it went wrong uh, as an actor, because nobody understands that. Maybe a co-actor does, you know. So sometimes I end up. So do you share? I, I think for so many years, uh, I, I have kept things to myself that I have stopped sharing. I'm still caring, <laughs> but I stopped sharing. <laughs> That's just a default mode now. Yeah. Because I just feel it'll pass, uh, it'll just move on, and 
I need to keep it within myself. And it's not just the failure. It's sometimes the sad parts, the good parts. You know. Not being able to explain to people where you are seeing the world from. It's not such a fucking special. No one can place. relate to it where is. he is. It's not, Julia. Really, yeah. It's not. It's not. Um, I'm so not there are women here standing and waiting. There's a whole line of people up there. Yeah, what do you mean it's not? Have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, like what a big problem, right? <laughs> no, you know, and, and, and thing is that perhaps they don't even know. Exactly. They don't I, know. I really, <laughs> Sometimes I want to sit everyone down and say, They know you SRK. Know, maybe you won't like me, dog. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Say, like my son to be like you. A lot of actresses have told me, you know, I want to grow up and be like you. And I said, Please don't wish for that. Because you don't know, you don't me, know me. Yeah. You know, unless you spend time with me, be with me, and realize, really, yeah, I'm in this okay. And the highest point in his uh, life is catching Pikachu. He must be having the most exciting night people on. Whoa, he must be having a gala time in. Amsterdam, partying away. I'm sitting in a car in a cold place and trying to catch Pikachu. It's great to be a movie star and it's great to be in my position. And then you get so used to people loving you for so long. So if somebody doesn't love you, it's like, what? Why you don't love me? How? How is that? Me? <laughs> I agree. Slice bread. Right. How could you not love me? Uh, everybody's not supposed to love you, fool. Exactly. You're a normal guy. Then why are you behaving abnormal? But not in this case. You gotta love everybody. You know, so it's a it's a difficult place to be. I'm I'm completely living in a bubble. I and I love my bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I love my uh, yeah. bubble. I just can't explain my bubble to you. Exactly. No so, so one maybe, knows. Maybe you and Amir and Salman should sit down because you're the only three who have experienced this. Actually, we've never spoken about superstar. About how famous you guys are? No, no. Uh, Sometimes, Even because it's still uh, different for each of them. Uh, working together. Um, but uh, those are only the good things. We speak on our dirty shit also. <laughs> Even if he talked to Tom Cruise, yeah. Tom Cruise can't relate. No. Uh, and he can't relate to what Tom's yeah, going no. through. I with Salman. And I just walked in. Me and my son got to see him. And uh, late night. And he said something. Uh, he said, you know what? Suddenly, I just walked in. He said, what lucky I'm like, yeah. You know, God has given us so much. You know, at our ages, people are readying themselves for retirement or at our stages or what we've seen, gone through here. You guys are really fortunate. But I realize that when he's saying something like that, uh, it has a strange amount of familiarity and how grateful we are. Um, I, I know <coughs> my friends, my family, they turn around and say, Shah Rukh, you can't be grateful. My God has been so kind to you. I can't, I can't explain to them the gratefulness I feel. But I understand what Salman says. But you know, uh, I'll, I'll be very honest. In the line of work we are, if you're not late sleepers like me and Salman sometimes, you hardly get time to meet each other. You know? Exactly, yeah. And uh, and if you do meet too often, then people say maybe you're having a relationship. And this is not the last thing that I want with Salman that I'm having a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, it's fun when we sit down. I do take time out to go and he takes the time out. Uh, Amit, when he's working, he's extremely proper. Nobody is younger than me. So then we don't meet him too often. But yeah, I spent that evening with him. Yeah. Tim Cook evening with him. That was nice. And it was a, I think I've said it in your book before. I think Sonny Liston. He's the one Muhammad Ali beat first time? Yes. So he wasn't very articulate. He was a good, good. Yeah. And suddenly Muhammad Ali came on the scene where he mm -hmm. was flying like a butterfly, sticking like a bee. He was a poet, yeah. And he was like, you talking, walking, handsome. And he was the other boxer who was a world champion, but he just spoke so little. He just grunted once. And then one day, they spoke with him and they asked him, you know, did you feel that he used to speak so much and that got people liking him more? You know, Sonny was still in an And a lot of controversies in that fight. And he said, you know, when sometimes to people, so much has happened in life that you don't find words enough to articulate I come from that place. I still mm. do the same forward flip over the sofa for my third child. I play the same game. I go and buy the same toy. I'm doing the same stuff. She was saying it the other day that I, he's only doing this. And I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm still doing the forward flip. Even now after 25 years. And maybe I'd like to believe in different nuances. <laughs> That's why I passed it. My flip has different nuances now. <laughs> my, 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 my power flip has a different nuance. Maybe that. I'm just playing lucky. And, you know, you don't need talent to last 25 years. You're not taking me away from here. <laughs> and you can keep on 
could have been more talented, sure. Could have been better looking, yeah. It could have been top, yeah. Could have been stronger, yeah. But it's me, so. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Wow, that was uh, that one was a lot more personal. I felt very personal. Um, yeah, compared to the, the the first one. Yep. Partly, I bet she had that intentionality and the fact that they would just had stopped in that moment, and he could just stand and reflect. And I love how much he trusts her mm. to just share, because an interview is only as good as the person asking the questions, and yeah. um, if they if they trust you mm -hmm. and show. I think at the end of the day, the reason he's happy talking with her and shares as much as he does is because he knows that she genuinely cares mm. and she wants to share the truth about him. Mm -hmm. So uh, she just does great interviews. And I just, the more I get to know about him, the more he's such an intelligent, self-evaluating, articulate, and op he seems to be a pretty optimistic and fun guy to be around. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and... It's so funny that they talked about that relationship. Him and Salman. Him and Salman obviously have been stars for around the same amount. Same of amount time. of time, yeah. And they both have. Well, and Amir. That's why they're the three really cons. similar trajectories yeah. in terms of how much they were beloved. Yeah. And those three are probably the only ones that can really relate to each other. Yeah. Even like because obviously their stardom is Indian super stardom. Sure. Uh, as opposed to you know Tom Cruise or Will Smiths yeah. uh, of the world that or, or even Johnny Depp's yeah. you know the um, you know the John, like all of them and Johnny probably has the most fans that are just absolutely beloved to mm -hmm. him yeah um, and they're on every continent yeah yeah um, but it's still nowhere near no. what the what what they get no it would be the closest I could come to it would be back in say the the heyday of the late 60s early 70s with the beatles um john and paul would yeah. be salman and srk yeah yeah for that sure. sense of we've had a ex similar experience we are ve definitely two different creatives and we have our own view on things but at the end of the day we can sit down and only you know this life the way i know it yeah. nobody else does yeah yeah i mean that's it's that level it's a it's a it's a lennon mccartney level of international generational stratospheric star. I would have been, you can't be a bigger star and we'll never know it but i would have loved to found a see what the trajectory of a shower khan would have been like if he didn't become a superstardom and he because he he was drawn to the villain roles in the beginning and, and that kind of stuff would he have become more of a rajkumar nawaz i think he, he would have if he didn't jump into superstardom i think he would have been more of a tiger shroff because he so. so badly wanted to do action, yeah. and he also wanted to be bad guys too. Yeah, not the tiger plays the bad guys, but I think, I think if it hadn't been the wheelhouse of love incarnate, Mister Romance, mm -hmm. I think he would have not taken so long to do a patan. He would have been doing tiger type movies yeah. in his wheelhouse. I don't know. It may be different. I mean, he enjoyed doing that, but it's also a similar trajectory because, yeah. Tom Cruise did Top Gun, but he spent a lot of time after that focusing on craft. He did The Color of Money. He did Rain Man. He did Born on the Fourth of July. He spent a lot of years doing Oscar level work, and then he realized and he then wasn't good at that. He no, he was quite good at that. <laughs> That's why he was nominated, uh, and <laughs> and got into you know dabbled in the rom coms with Jerry Maguire's fantastic, mm. um, but. Then decided, you know what? While I can, I want to. This is what I really want to do. So, make a bunch yeah, of money. Be interesting to see what trajectory he would have taken. I, if you came over, we'd ask you that. Yeah, and help you promote because I know you need our help promoting your 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 cricket team here in L.A. It's true. So come on over. We'll get you two, three, four people. Maybe if you come on the channel, more yeah. people will go see Bathon again. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you want a nice wave on OTT. The lair awaits you, this sir. This is the only way it'll happen. The lair awaits you, sir. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let us know uh, what other videos we can react to and what you thought about this down below. Just